lots of muskeg, lots of spruce trees, lots of blueberries, and Bigfoot. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, there's water there. Hang on. I gotta take a little walk in there. That forest, the trees that you see straight ahead, that is the Bigfoot Blueberry Patch. A little ways away from it, so um, I'm gonna put this in four just in case. I think I'll be fine. The ground seems pretty hard. Yeah, we're good. We're good, we're good. Eyes wide open and your ears open, earbuds in if you have them. Okay, here we go. very small but I mean they're coming I think only about half of them are are ready but it's the blueberry patch everybody okay so I do have my back camera today and I kind of come a little bit light because we're gonna do quite a bit of walking back in there but something's moving back there and I do have to watch for the bear uh, blueberries and Bigfoot blueberries and bear the bears like the blueberries too so do the grizzlies all right let's get busy
we got a bit of a breeze happening here. I got my windsock on the camera. I'm using my external mic again, my Boya mic. Uh, it did pretty good last time, right? I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, it picked up all those wood knocks and sounds very, very clear. I was impressed. Hopefully that's good there. Okay, <laughs> it's recording. I did bring some treats. Uh, I'm, I don't know where I'm gonna leave them, but I'm just gonna leave some stuff here. If you can all recall, I think it was last summer when I was here, I found the bed. I'll put this little picture up here. I found the bed and I did leave um, a beautiful stone there from that I got from one of my subscribers with a willow wreath. And I brought another willow wreath and some food stuff I bought. Uh, I bought some vegetable thins and dried cherries and if I can find a good place to leave it, I will. The reason I don't have a gifting bowl back in this area, I can put one here though. I do have that extra bowl and, but this is the same clan that's near to my farm because I'm only See. four miles as the crow flies south and east of my house right here in this blueberry patch so this is all their territory right this is all, and you'll see uh hopefully the, the great big pp structure is still back make my way to the structure and that bed that i had filmed last summer was just south and east a little bit of that structure they are up in here and i know they love the blueberries bigfoots are good on the berries right uh berries and crab apples and cherries everybody talks about them being these big meat carnivores we, we have never seen kill sites we're very much familiar with the trees but we've never come on to any bigfoot kill sites so but what we know is they're mostly they're very roots and very much like a bear a bear's diet roots and berries and nuts and we think they may eat fish because of the lake. There's a lot of Bigfoot activity around the lake and there's rainbow trout in there. And we have seen Sasquatch tracks right next to the water. They may fish, right? They may eat fish. But I think berries, roots, nuts, um, crab apples, if they can get them, uh, a lot of that stuff is in their diet and not so much meat. Anyway, I'll quit rambling. Let's go check out the Bigfoot blueberry patch. Which trail should we take? The one closest to the closest to the muskeg, or the one? I think we'll go to the top one. Maybe we'll come back through the muskeg at the bottom, down lower. Kind of everything kind of goes on the slope here, and, and it's sloping its way to the lake, right? Blueberries, the blueberry patch. I love it back here. It's, there's so much foot sign in here. And I really believe this is one of their places where they just come and it's the beds, right? The beds are telling me that they just come here and they, they stay here. And this is a place where they uh, come often. And I don't know if there's any deer. Like I say, this is about four miles south and east as the crow flies. Five if you're driving. Uh, and maybe, maybe some are here, or one is here. You know, I sometimes think, you know where their structures are, where they have their structures, and things like that. It's almost like there's always one to monitor those. They're very important. I think they're very important to them, and it's almost like you get one okay I'm gonna show you something here and there's a lot of these you see that there's always like three pieces or three poles three three trees it forms this little triangle right and I will I'm gonna keep walking here because I can imagine I'll come on to more and it's usually right all along the on the trail right on the trail There's lots of them in here. I don't quite understand that structure, but they make them. And here we go. Another one. It's a little bit bigger one. It's all along the trails.
keep my ears open too for bears. For little bears. There we go. See these. I've only come onto two of these though. Up two of these here at the blueberry patch, but they are here. Very nice. That one's very nice. I'm not sure how old it is and if you go further that would be south south and east there's more so this is the tp structure the the big Fire blueberry patch structure ah, tp structure but yeah those little ground formations glyphs or whatever that is they make them all over in here on and they're on the game trail which I find really interesting. But we're going to go down into the darkness. <laughs> Look back in there. It's dark. That's where we're going. Okay. We're going down in there. Oh, and I see lots of water. I don't know how far we'll go down in there. Uh, track. Uh, I'm gonna make my way to the game trail, back onto the game trail. I'm gonna see if there's any tracks down in here. Lots of water. I see a lot of water. I pretty sure I heard of when I was walking to that structure a footstone. the uh, last winter that was where I went through and I had that little those two little um, black cryptids up in a tree that's where they were in the muskeg I'd have I did get one uh, last summer in that muskeg I'm here while I'm here I mean it wouldn't take them uh, how they travel and how fast they move it wouldn't take them long to get here from any other <clears throat> any other place within their territory okay, there's a trail a game trail screen center and I'm on it and it goes right into that muskeg. I wanted to see if there's any any traps. Any oh I didn't realize I was standing in water. Hello Anybody here? There's a lot of water in this muskeg. Cold, cold, nice cold water. If you dig down 
Like this is what I always one of the survival uh, teachings from my elders, our ancestors, the Cree people. Muskegs. If you can't find water and you see a muskeg, go there and just dig under all the moss. You'll have a good foot, two feet of moss, but all of a sudden you'll hit ice clean, clear water. And so good, good water. But yeah, I would have, I'm on a trail here now. Um, going south now so I can't go any further that way because of the water so we'll head south I want to try to come up onto that onto that see if that bed is still there they're using it oh I didn't bring my oh no Oh, no, okay, that was good. Okay, um, that's where I'm going. Okay. Uh, okay, one's here, somewhere. Oh, that tree don't seem very, very sturdy. Uh, Okay, I'm walking into Fernville. <laughs> oh yeah, there's ferns. Ferns. Oh. Okay, I heard it. we heard a wood knock. And yeah, we got ferns back here. Yeah, there was a vocal. Back way, way back there. I'm positive, I'm sure of it. so deceiving back here yeah. and then you have that constant white noise of wind way up in the leaves way above you things get very deceiving it's hard to discern and tell which way things are coming I kept hearing I thought I kept hearing sounds over there but there were sounds
These are actually very, very good to eat. Like in the springtime when they're first starting, they call them fiddleheads. Very good. You steam them just like you would a Brussels sprout or or broccoli or something like that. You add butter, lots of butter and salt and pepper. Oh, very, very good and high in nutrients. These. And this is another one of the things I think the Sasquatch eat, because wherever there are a fid fiddlehead patches in the spring. I've seen structures and we've seen tracks, lethal tracks, so probably another staple to their diet. Fiddleheads. Add that to the list. Add that to the list. Okay. Uh, I think I'm close to that. Keep your guys' eyes open behind me. Oh wait! Anyway, I think I quit. Uh, this is a very nice place. It would be beautiful to have a cabin. Is that not a local? This is a very nice place. It would be beautiful to have a cabin. Is that not a local? I was talking. Always. Oh, uh, somebody had asked me. One of the, one of the subscribers asked me. How come I don't just sit and stay still and wait for them to move? <laughs> wait for them to move? We've learned already that they move when I move. They'll talk to each other when I'm talking. They wait for those opportune moments, right? It's another way for them to keep hidden and keep us from hearing them or seeing them. I have did the whole sitting and waiting them to either come out or move or make us they won't until I start they wait till I move or talk It's here, but it's not used. Nope, it's all through here. Oh, I hear, I hear a squirrel. We've got movement. Anyway, uh, if you can all remember, this was the bed. It was all you, I think they used it all summer because it was right worn down to the dirt. Yeah, we've got something coming. Okay. Oh. I'm going towards the move where the movement is. Back onto the trail. Oh. 